So welcome everybody. We're going to have a both together, so we'll mainly discuss, but I have prepared a few slides of introduction. The topic today is uh, using Debian money to fund Debian projects. Uh, it comes from two, uh, well, we've seen that Debian has a lot of money, so it's, on one side we want to be, to look how we can use uh, all this money to further Debian's goals. Uh, maybe through funding Debian projects. And on the other side, uh, I've been handling Debian LTS, so which is using money, not necessarily Debian's money, depending, depending on one's view, but uh, we are funding Debian contributors, and uh, well, uh, the community is still alive and the world didn't end. So there are things that can be done, and we are going together to try to find more things that could be funded in some way. So Mac, uh, Benjamin McCoyle had a nice, uh, wrote a nice text on the dangers of funding volunteers or danger of funding people in volunteer projects. So here's a list of the known problems. There's at least the problem of jealousy between members which are paid and those who are unpaid. There's a problem of volunteers stepping down from work that paid contributors are doing, uh, sometimes for philosophical reasons, sometimes just because, well, if someone else is already doing, then I can do something more interesting uh, or tackle another area where there is nobody working on it. There's a risk of paid contributors trying to lock themselves in their positions because they want to be paid again and again Could for the same work. So either they do it voluntarily or they can also do it un inconsciously because uh, out of laziness, it's easier to well, coordinate with yourself and not document anything. And if you want to let other people join, you have to make the effort of documenting things. So it's a risk when you pay people. And the last point is obviously that uh, when you are paid by someone, you listen carefully to what this person or company has to say, and you may be less uh, willing to consider the global problems that all users have, those who have money and those who don't have any. So. Uh, Benjamin also found not solutions, but uh, things that limit the problems. So he has a few advice for us. The first one is uh, that we should fund work that volunteers do not do. That's the LTS project is in this space. Obviously, in, uh, not many people are interested in uh, doing security updates on outdated software. But uh, we can also consider in this area all the administrative work, bookkeeping, accounting sometimes. You should fund limited projects, both in scope and in duration. Well, the Google Summer of Scots basically is in this uh, category because it lasts only a few months and the projects are rather well defined. It's not something that is recurring. It's a time limited thing. You can also fund widely desired features that you've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, there are quite a few features that uh, when we discuss between them, between us, we, we always say, well, it would be nice if we had that, but nobody did anything in years. So maybe uh, we could use money here to get the thing going forward. Another important point is more of a process point is that, well, when you handle money, you have to do it in a fair and transparent way. I've given a LTS talk this morning and I tried to explain uh, what rules we have set up to uh, guarantee this transparency and this fairness. I invite you to 
look it up if you have the, the time. Maybe we'll come again to it later in, during the discussion. And the last point is possibly, uh, it's, it's, it's not really a, a solution, it's rather a workaround. Uh, e given the implication of money, it's sometimes safer to externalize the handling of money to a to external organization. So this is also something that we did for LTS, not really uh, uh, out of choice, but because the, I believed that it was the safe, safest option uh, to start with, because while well, we had an history with Dang Tong and everything, and we did not want to uh, go through Debian directly because it would have been difficult to get things done in time. But may know that things are uh, rolling, working well. Uh, it might be time to discuss the possibility to bring back LTS support in Debian if that's what we want. I mean, the handling of money related to LTS. I also want to share a bit of experience on other free software projects that have uh, been funded. Uh, I know at least of the Django project. Their foundation pays a Django fellow, which is uh, in charge of administrative and community management tasks. He publishes a weekly report. And uh, well, he, he has in charge tasks that would not be fundable on the Debian side, but still they have very good results, uh, in particular in terms of uh, timely release. Django always struggled a bit, and thanks to their fellow, they you know able to release timely, or rather timely. Uh, reproducible build has two contributors funded through the core infrastructure I initiative grant. I wanted to give you some details, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Olga did not came, did not come, and I wanted to question him to be able to set up a bit more. I asked him over mail, but he was unable to respond in time with anything useful. But uh, what I know is that they, when they had the grant, they discussed internally uh, uh, who was interested, and basically uh, all the people who were interested uh, had the opportunity to, to work on a, on a paid way. So it, come, it came afterwards, but uh, it was relatively well handled within the community. And well, nobody seems to have stepped away due to, to, due to the money or due to the grant. I know also that uh, Tails uh, is paying people. They usually do it for administrative and boring tasks. And which, what is interesting is that fundraising itself is included in that. So uh, people are doing fundraising are, are paid by tails. Sometimes after the fact, when they uh, get the grant, they, they have the means to, to pay for the time that they invested uh, in getting the grant. And they also pay uh, development projects. But all those which are funded are directly related to, the, to their roadmap. And their roadmap is uh, elaborated uh, in a community, uh, well, collaborative way uh, beforehand. Uh, they are rather small, and they have not a, ve a very formalized process to select projects. But uh, well, you're free to discuss with Intrigueri or Solveig and others involved in the TAIS projects who are here, if you want to learn more. And now we're going to switch to the Gobi document. There's a Gobi document uh, fundraising, mm. funding Debian projects in the DevConfset both directory. I invite you to open it and to take notes because those are the questions that we would like to start with. Uh, by the way, if you have early questions on what I presented, no, it's fine. What is this? So any questions so far? How 
the ATS program works, or how many is handled through the project, or something else. I'll just reiterate the comments that I already shared um, with both of you in email um, prior, prior to the conference um, for the benefit of the room, which is that I don't, uh, I don't like the current situation between LTS and Debian and uh, your company, despite the good work that is being done and the, good, the administrative work that is a burden that you're doing. And I appreciate that doing it through SPI would be painful given how few resources they can, they can bring to bear to um, accounting uh, uh, challenges, but I would prefer LTS to either be uh, the work that you're doing through your company to be further removed from Debian so that you're not using the Debian trademark and logos and so that we're not referencing each other on the Debian wiki and other pages or bring it closer, meaning that um, the money is handled through one of the trusted organizations, even if that means your own company becomes a trusted organization. But this current middle ground is not, uh, I don't like it. And sorry, my second comment, which is uh, related but not particularly uh, pointed at LTS, is that um, prior to uh, DebConf, we had a couple of pints down at the UCT club, and we chatted about the perverse incentives that funding people to do work uh, brings to bear. You mentioned it a little bit in some of your risks, where people become entrenched in the work they're doing, or they're becoming paid, uh, paid to do repetitive work because they um, uh, they don't ever complete the task, wh whatever the case might be, but it brings some perverse incentives uh, to bear. So, uh, I know of those challenges. I'm not sure uh, we want to start in this discussion right now because, uh, well, I would like to go through the question first. Uh, is there are, still, there are two sides. Some people uh, would like to go closer, so some prefer an external. So I think we will have to uh, make two distinct proposals and maybe vo vote on it too, because I don't know uh, how to bring back both sides together. But uh, the, the idea of making friction a uh, trusted organization is, is worth exploring, I guess, because it's a middle ground, possibly, between. Uh, and the thing is, uh, you're mentioning that you use a uh, trademark. Uh, I made an official request to the trademark team, and uh, basically, uh, as we r refer to uh, services, which is long-term support related to Debian, uh, they believe that uh, we do not need any special authorization. So. Anyway, let's start with the first question, which is, uh, uh, besides Debian LTS security work, are there other tasks that we should do in Debian that we are not doing because not enough persons are motivated or interested by them? Do you know of any? Please tell and fill the dots. I could also just write it in, but uh, I think in general um, I would love to hear from the auditors, the accounting uh, guys. Because I know that's a lot of work and a lot of uh, um, difficult work where it's easy to make errors. And I've said this before in the mailing list, um, possibly some sort of, uh, or, or possibly beneficial if we would outsource this. And by that I mean create an interface that forces us to be more correct about what we're doing. Uh, I share it. But uh, my opinion that is that as a project, we don't do, it should work, but I don't know why. Do um, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, as a Debian project, we don't do any accounting, actually. It's on the TOs. So yeah, the TOs has to be, have to be uh, more reactive and uh, doing things on that. But uh, we, as a project, we don't do accounting yet. And we will probably never uh, need to do any of this, of this work. Yeah, sure. Um, 
Yeah, yes, we have a couple of TOs, and I think it's great that this is working in a distributed fashion. But uh, this, if this buff is about funding work in Debian in a sort of like uh, coordinated fashion, yeah. and early on we were talking also about uh, uh, Debian Partners program and uh, and potentially increasing the revenue or, or whatever we do um, to, to get money that we can then spend uh, on projects, then I don't think you're going to be able to do that without consolidation at the top, at the project level for accounting. Yeah. And that's hard work sure. and probably not something, you know, I mean, I know Martin has been doing a lot of it over there, but uh, I'm sure that he can do other things with his time. And uh, I mean, the, there's, there's also two different types of work we're talking about now because um, the long-term support work, we're assuming that it would be people who are already involved in Debian and normal project members, so on, who would be doing it. If it's if we were saying we want to have pay someone to do accounting, it's not clear whether we would necessarily choose someone who's a, a regular project member sure. or just some, a, a regular accountant outside. So it's a, it is a different category. Um, replying to put your walls, I don't think, and in the line of what Mehdi said, I don't think project is not doing any, doesn't have any incomes and doesn't have any outcomes. This is pipeline through trusted organizations. So we have more than a couple trusted organizations and those are the ones that are doing the accounting. So if there's a partners program or anything, it's just the trusted organizations, with the ones that are doing this accounting at that level. Yes, I, I don't think that's true because the trusted organization, at least for SPI, it might be different for the other ones, which are actually more Debian specific. But for SPI, SPI doesn't doesn't care what kind of expense it is. It just is it Debian, right? But they're not going to classify is that you know hardware, is that travel, is that Sprint. So Debian still needs to do that fine-grained accounting. Um, and, and right now, so basically the reason I didn't make progress was simply because we couldn't get the data from the trusted organizations we needed. So, you know, every transaction. Um, and so that's why I got involved in SPI and, and to solve it at, at the root. And actually, uh, Sobel is doing a fantastic job right now putting stuff in Ledger. Um, so I think at some point we can actually, Debian as a project can go back and, and you know, get the data from all the trusted organizations and then integrate that into one financial report because we really want to have a, a financial report about Debian, right? Because people are donating to Debian. They're not donating to SPI or to, you know, Debian Switzerland. They, they don't care about, you know, <laughs> who, who, which trusted organization. They just want to see it as one, um, as Debian. We, we have most of that data, but we just missing SPI, which is work in progress. They're having some problems with uh, the accounting there, which Martin said Sobel is working on that. And this is just coming. So, but I, I, there's people working on this. I don't think we need to fund an external accountant to get this more complex than it, it currently is. Well, if people are working on it already, then that's great. Um, I'd like to propose that we uh, differentiate a little bit between co the concepts of uh, well, there's fundraising and then there's uh, accountancy and treasury. Um, I think every single trusted organization, given their legal status in the country where they are, are going to have to do some accountancy, no question whatsoever. But in the, in the light of the Debian project, a trusted organization is really a treasury. It's really a, a trusted body that um, handles our bank account, essentially. The DPL is the person that can say money from there goes somewhere else. and once and, and if we accept this, which is how, how the trusted organization is defined, then what we have is a virtual organization on top of all these trusted organizations, which are treasuries, and the accounting has to happen at the top level. And as uh, TBM just said, um, for instance, uh, for DebConf uh, in, in Germany, I mean, the accounts and expense categories that we had to use were tax compliant in Germany. They're not necessarily useful in the Debian context. So being able to really uh, write re expense reports into our financial reports uh, on how we use the money is going to make it a lot easier uh, for us to approach our sponsors and say, look, this is, this is productive use of, of your funds. 
and then that gets me into fundraising, and I'll um, just one more sentence on that. Fundraising is not something that a trusted organization can do um, in a, like a universe of their own. Um, we need to coordinate among all of the trusted organizations to have one uh, united, one, one consolidated fundraising effort um, because it's not going to work if multiple entities speak to the same sponsors or if we don't know what, what the others are doing. This has to be coordinated from, from above. I think we mainly agree on the six of the TOs and the ultimate goal. And maybe we should get back to the main subject about how to fund the bank project. Yeah. Which is what uh, about. So I completely agree with the things that were just said uh, around the trusted organization, treasury, blah, blah, blah. I, um, I agree wholeheartedly with those. Um, getting back to the topic, since you've asked. Uh, um, it's not so much in the category of uh, things that people um, are not doing because we're not motivated by them, but um, maybe it's in one of the other questions. I really like the Google Summer of Code concept because it's really about trying to find new people who want to work in open source and recruiting them into Debian somehow through a project like Google Summer of Code or what have you. So any project that is short-lived and is focused around bringing fresh people into the project from either a diversity perspective or from a skill set perspective um, would be great. Uh, this could include funding DDs to go to events uh, where we represent Debian um, to run workshops. You know, we could even become a you know Debian.edu and offer mini courses and stuff like that. Um, becoming a Debian.edu has a side effect uh, officially has a side effect of becoming a Jerome uh, a partner. <laughs> Uh, about the ideas that we are putting on the Gobi, uh, do you all agree here that we could, for example, pay people to do some fundraising, accounting, etc.? I mean, with Debian money? Uh, I, I mean, that's I, the question is about. I did just very quickly, I'd be really careful about paying people to do fundraising. It's, it, that is going to contain this issue. That's why I'm the question, because the question on the Gobi is uh, what's not covering by volunteer work? And we should, it could be covered by the. I, I think there's a lot of stuff around fundraising that can be paid for, mm -hmm. but uh, incentivizing people, for instance, telling me if I manage to get HPE to do platinum sponsorship next year, then I get five percent of the cut. I don't think you should do that, and not only because of uh, moral issues in this project, but also because of tax issues. It's it's yeah, sure. difficult. I mean, that's exactly why I'm asking the question because uh, yeah, the list I is. Uh, I is think important. if we fund fund fundraising, it should not be a, uh, a percentage, like, sh like you say. It's uh, clearly uh, just uh, covering uh, time spent, just like Taves has been doing, I believe. It's the only sane option. <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, it doesn't need to happen. It's just a possibility. Yeah, um, I just wanted to make the point that uh, things that, that are important to Debian usually f get done in the end. And most of the things, uh, well, even fundraising and accounting, uh, okay, it's not being done at the moment, but probably if we were on a shortage of, uh, of money, we would do it. And uh, we are not doing it, but okay, it's not that big, but that big of a problem because we know that we have about three hundred thousand dollars at SPI, and uh, well, just nobody. There's no pressure to do it, and I think the same holds for most of the things that are not being done. I mean, the Debian website is kind of uh, old and well, looks old, but actually, we don't really care that much about that because uh, well, our distribution also has well, that, that image of being a rather old and uh, solid project. It kind of matches the general image. And I'm not, I'm not sure we are a project who would like a really fancy uh, website. Um, so I, I really doubt that we need to seek additional ways to make progress on such issues. I cannot see any of them that are so important uh, and not that, you know, that we cannot address if we decide it's so important. I think it's time to go to the next question because I don't think we will uh, add much more to the first one. 
Do you know of widely desired features that we have been, <laughs> been waiting on for a long time? Bike shots. Yeah. <laughs> that was the obvious one. <laughs> Thanks. So my comment also applies to that category. Really? I don't think I, by shed no, that's... Is, yeah. we don't, it's not being done because nobody cares sufficiently about it. Mm. <laughs> so le let's, be, uh, let's agree on the goal of the buff. It's not about uh, necessarily find ways to get rid of the 300,000 euros that you have in the bank accounts is to uh, agree on uh, how the Debian, should be, Debian money should be spent, uh, which things should be covered by the project, and just have the consensus that if we uh, don't manage to get the money spent, that's okay -ish. It's not a goal per se. Maybe we don't, shouldn't raise that much money. Um, I'm, well, I'm I think stop asking the question. I think uh, we'll have a more interesting question when we come to the next point. So just see if we, if we can find a few other examples for this question and <coughs> then go to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you know of any other things that you have been waiting for that have not been happening? So about the accounting, we are only lacking data for, for now. So the auditor's team is already in place and has the processes, uh, once they have the data from SPI, they will be able to resume their work and get the financial reports done. Just to, yeah. yeah. Um, one, it's not a feature that I'm desire, but if I look at the bug count of central techniques like apt, dpkg, and other things, they are just increasing over all the years. And I would be happy if maybe we should do some cleanup there. The, the very important tools then that are very important for Debian should not be in this situation where the bug count is just increasing over years and never goes down. So you mean paying someone to do the big trading? So uh, <clears throat> on the context of apt and dpkg, uh, there's a Google Summer of Code project that is going on right now to enhance the communication between the two tools and get rid of some of that uh, craft that we have accumulated over the years. And I believe that <coughs> going to question three of Debian having its own grant program, uh, I guess that would be an interesting way of enabling people to get things done on yeah. those core projects that uh, we desperately need. I have another idea, and uh, it may, it's slightly not a uh, feature, but it might be. It's Ubuntu does lots of stuff I'm not so glad about, but one thing they do well is they have very pretty designs. Each version has a very nice background and stuff. And in Debian, we, the last one was better, and I really liked Space Fun before it, but we kind of don't care much about this, and we don't have many designers contributing, and that might be something that could be funny to found. And Maybe it might also help with uh, reaching out to more people, new people, younger people, different people, and that might be interesting. I'd just like to say um, that two days ago we uh, were in here, I think, and uh, it, was, it was told that there are people um, interested in working on web design and potentially also distro design. Um, it has been getting better already. The problem that I see here with funding someone is that it probably is going to put all of the uh, creative folks that are currently interested off the job because two creative directors can't really work together, right? So we need to somehow find a team effort uh, to do this. And uh, I, I think the most important thing here is not necessarily the, the lack of money, but uh, the go-ahead from the project. Yeah, well, but is it, I think, 
it's uh, true that in the past we neglected that part of the project about the design and having fancy pictures. And we've been doing better for, we've done it for Jesse, for Squeeze. Uh, we've done it um, less, I mean, not a good way and for Wizzy. That's how, why it didn't work well, but we've done better for Jesse. And it's going to be good for the next one stretch. Uh. So I think it's uh, only a matter of making sure that things are organized and well, making some announcements maybe around the subject. We don't have, we only have a quarter left. Uh, just on this topic, uh, instead of paying someone, we could have prizes so that we could motivate more designers to participate and have a better result. As I think we've had a lot of designers in the past interested. Normally the block was working within the technical constraints and making, pe making things that people really wanted to push on the technical work. Mm. Even if you pay someone, that doesn't solve that side. Mm. So. Who added the sentence about the Pearl Foundation grant? Can you say a few words about it? Is it work? Yeah. Uh, the Pearl Foundation has a grants program when they have an elected board of uh, grant committee members. So y y you can submit a proposal at any time. You describe your project, you describe the milestones you want to achieve the time frame and see uh, how much you need to make that happen. And then the committee approves that or not. And they, they have to do pretty much like you, you guys doing L LTS, which public reports every month and everything. So if, if for instance, we had a yeah. predefined budget for a year, say, then the grant committee could be a team delegated by the DPL to yeah. handle that. That, that's budget and okay, that's precisely the purpose of the question three. If we have such a program, what is the best way to select what project to fund? Currently, it would fall down to the responsibility of the DPL, which approves the project. Is this what we want? Do we want a separate team? Uh, do we want a, a vote by the DD body? Mm. So I just wanted yeah, to follow up on that because I was president of the Pearl Foundation and launched that grants program. And I'm still on the board. Um, I think some of the important features of that are there is a grants committee that votes, but there is a public process. Every grant proposal that comes in is posted publicly and everyone in the community has an opportunity to comment on it. So there really is a consensus in the community reached uh, before there, there's even a vote on it. And also the grant committee's authority is delegated so in much it would be like from the DPL it's a delegated authority um, and has certain limits set on it so when it goes over a certain limit then they have to push that up to a higher level um, but I think really making it a community process is the most important thing so nobody is ever surprised by some project being funded that they think is completely worthless or in fact actively harmful to the community I'd like to uh, add a little bit to that um, I think it's important to realize that we're not going to be able to come up with a grants program by sitting down and discussing this on a mailing list and writing down a piece of document. I think we should get started and, and see what, where it takes us because we're going to learn in the process. And being transparent about things, I think, is going to be the key to success. So what's the first step to start it? Do you mean uh, we Give should just get... Or well, we have lots of money, uh, apparently, to, to spend. So uh, I but think if we have to... Make the limits clear from the beginning to try something because it's uh, if it's uh, about short projects, it doesn't have to. Yeah, we don't have to. On big uh, amount of money. Mm -hmm. So that's so a problem. But if you if you do a quick poll, for example, who would be for the grant idea in Debian? Uh, who, who is for the grant idea in Debian? like 50%. And those who are against, uh, is this, <laughs> can you expand on why? I'm not, so, you can see me. I'm not so much against it, but uh, yes, I can see the lens so you can see me. I'm not so much against it, but I don't think it's, it's necessarily a good idea and it would depend on the specifics before I would say yes or no. Um, so that's why I didn't say yes, I'm, 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 I'm for it. Sure. I'm, I'm just not decided yet. Yeah, but so, some people are really against spending Debian money on paid work from the beginning. So 
It's not about the conditions, it's about the um, philosophy. That's why I want uh, to... So is there anyone firmly opposed, no matter what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not just a way to decide, but just to see if someone has a yeah, really philosophy. Yeah. It's a few. Lynch you on your way out, but you can speak out. Okay, forget that question. I don't know. I think yeah. we know there are people who will be very unhappy, so I'm not entirely con um, comfortable with this point. We just start off giving grants because there could have an explosion of people quitting and people being very upset and giving up on volunteer work and so on. So I'm fairly against, but it probably depends on specifics. And I'd like to, I think that if something is tried uh, in that direction, it would be nice to think of it as an experiment. I mean, think about what are the, the questions that you want to answer out of the process and make sure that you can answer those questions uh, as part of the experimental process. For example, I don't think that it would be a good idea to do it using Debian money. Uh, it would be much more interesting to do it using external money that you know that in the future we'll be able to raise funds uh, specifically for that. It is accept acceptable to our donors to, to do stuff uh, like that with our money. If we do it with Debian money, we won't have any idea on whether uh, companies or individuals that are donating money to Debian would be fine with uh, donating money for that in the future. So at least as a first uh, iteration, it would be nice to do it purely using external money. So I have an opinion on that, is that the people and the companies who have donated money to Debian in the past trust Debian to use the money responsibly. And I think we have wide enough a buffer that we don't really need to worry about that right now. So I think the experiment could work with just Debian money. Yeah, but then you don't know if it will be sustainable. Then we need to do some kind of uh, sponsor survey or something, but yeah. It, it does not matter. Y you have a grant program with a budget. You either you can fund zero project or two or three, but uh, well, you adjust the amount of funded project to the amount of sponsorships that you have. So, so I would I would respond to that. Keep it small, whatever the source of funding. I would say first grant should be no more than five k. Absolutely, keep it tiny. Um, and you're actually going to have a hard time raising external funding before you've had a successful grant. One at least tiny successful grant. Could be tiny, could be 1K, it doesn't matter. Um, and if it's like the fact that you spent 1K of Debian money to see the idea to get a successful grant to then raise external funding before you do any more, um, that's more where you find out if it's sustainable than trying to sort of hold off everything until you get external interest. We've raised that amount of money in the past for Outreachy, for example. So I don't think it would be a problem to do it. But, uh, I'd like to it was a really huge pain to raise that amount of money for Outreachy. I know I did it. So <laughs> I that's a useful thing to know. Yeah. Uh, that's a useful thing to know that it would, it would, it would be a pain <coughs> to reach it. In a, that's it. No, okay. I think that uh, what you're raising, the point about sustainability of the uh, money, is, is an important one. And, and the more we deal with this, the more this always percolates to the top. On the one side, we need to know how to spend money. On the other, night, we, on the other side, I feel that a lot of people are not comfortable spending the money we have in our bank accounts out of the vault, um, but would be much more comfortable if we knew that 100,000 came in every year and we could use it for that. I mean, it all, I think it does also depend a lot on what as in f my guess of how people respond is it depends a lot on what the grant, what direction the grants are going in that I think not many people are thoroughly opposed when it's in the kind of outreach sphere as at, mom as at the present, although I suspect some of the people, I suspect there exist people who are opposed and don't realize that kind of Debian money has gone that way because previously it was Google Summer of Code that didn't, didn't work that way. Um, but I think if we have a more general grants program, sooner or later you kind of are likely to, and unless you ban it from the start, you're likely to end up funding kind of core people, what is seen as core people to do important core tasks. And I think that then gets back to what we know from the, a lot of people at least used to be against. Maybe that's changed, but uh, at least in the past, a lot of people were very much against that. 
think if you compare this to uh, Dunk Tank, which basically just said we're going to try this with the release managers and borrow a lot from the LTS idea, which is essentially um, everybody is free to work on this. And uh, you know, if if you're the core apt maintainer and uh, you're you can now decide for yourself, am I going to do the work that I do anyway, or am I possibly going to be able to implement this feature two months early if I get a 1K grant? Um, you can apply for it. The community transparently decides uh, for it. And then I think it, as soon as we get to the point where we show results, it's going to be powerful towards the, fun, uh, the sponsors, and it's also going to probably um, foreclose most of the discussions in the project. Well, <laughs> hopefully not, right? Back to just the issue of funding the experiment for the grant ID, I think it would be really bad to put fundraising for the grant ID as a hurdle for the people that want to try it, because it will, uh, it will kill the project. It will make it more difficult. Significant. So we have only a few minutes left. Uh, so, what would be the first step to try it? Would would it be okay if the DPL was the one to who selected the, the initial set of projects if you wanted to experiment, or do you believe we would need something other? I mean, since uh, it's the first time we're going to have such projects, and since there is no uh, consensus on the idea project-wide yet, we could have a vote for a first grant so that we could have uh, vote I mean either the project approves it or not. Right, although if you have it that way, it, it's actually the likelihood is that draws it back towards the kind of core activities because people are not going to all vote for the same kind of outreach type project as each other. If the, the projects that get a lot of votes will be the ones that actually are also more contentious to, to support. Or you could also say it's uh, for newcomers outside the community and for Sure, if it's something like this, I think then it's it's much less likely to get opposition. Right but that hasn't been said so far. Yeah, sure. so, so I think the sustainability piece is quite important. Um, you know, we've been very generous several years ago with a bite mark donation that really took care of a lot of our hardware concerns and this year, HP has been exceedingly generous both with the conference and with hardware for uh, Debian core services. So um, when we look at the amount of money that we have in trust at SPI or the other TOs, that really is you know, a one and a half years of operating budget between DebConf and uh, H, you know, DSA expenses on hardware refresh if there were no money. So you know, achieving sustainability on income is really important. Uh, it's not like we have 10 years worth of funding sitting in, in the TOs. No. So um, if, I had, if I had greater clarity on the income uh, and, more, and more, more consistent income, uh, then I'd be less concerned about uh, spending a lot of that money. But we are only talking about 5K. Yeah? Yes. <coughs> but just, yeah, just two things. One thing uh, I, I want to fully second what Lucas says, because the thing is, um, if you if you do something and you raise expectations and then you can't follow up on it because you have not cleared the income side, that's not really worth it. I'm again completely with OLSD too. To try something for 5k or 10k or so, there's no need to hold it all up by making sure you have the income side settled. But you know you need to do both. And so you know before you declare the um, experiment successful, you have to have a way to also have the income side settled, right? Um, so, so that's just important. The other thing I would say is um, I would deliberately not vote because the thing is you need to also establish a process that will halfway efficiently allocate a certain amount of funding that you annually take and do not give to DebConf and do not give to the DSA hardware and do not give to mini DebConfs and whatnot into those grants. And if that always comes down to having half a GR, that doesn't actually make sense. So I would deliberately use this experiment also to establish a process that transparently but efficiently actually selects those, pro th those projects. And if people 
you know, have complaints, they shall complain against the process and help improve the process. But have everybody vote so nobody can be against it is actually, you know, a very inefficient way of doing it and cannot be sustainable in the long run. So we have to find something that will be sustainable in the long run, otherwise the experiment doesn't work on the process side. Okay. So uh, I... Um, we're mostly out of time, I think. But well, last yeah, comment? What I, what I want, I'm mostly in agreement. What I was going to say is that um, if you're... Uh, if you just say as a DPL, I'm assigning now X amount of money to um, this this experiment uh, with no guarantee that we're going to continue doing it, but this is just to see what would happen if we do this and then delegate a number of people to, to, to run it. Um, I think that would be not very contentious as, uh, as, a, as an experiment to do that. Uh, if it is made clear that everybody can have their say after the experiment is run, even people who are opposed to it uh, will have that feeling then at that point that uh, they may oppose it after the fact, um, if that is honestly done then, of course. And I think by, by doing it that way, you also give us data to discuss about. Because right now it's all hypotheticals, uh, but if you actually do the experiment and we do it that way, um, then I think that, that would take away a lot of questions and would make many things a lot clearer and would give us a, a reasonable discussion, which is very difficult to achieve right now. Mm. Sure. Last question before I cut uh, the discussion. Uh, if there was such a program where you had the opportunity to apply for a grant for, so that you can implement yourself the feature or so that you can mentor the, the project with uh, uh, non-students or someone knowledgeable to implement it, would you submit a proposal? Or would you consider submitting a, a proposal to the to the grant? So nobody in this room would. Uh, small, join. small tiny caveat with that is that mentoring someone takes way more time than just doing the thing that you would have done yourself. So yeah. So that's why I said non-students really so. I mean, if you the mentor, you you can. Accept to do it only if you have someone yeah, who looks knowledgeable to be to do it. I guess also the result, the answer to this question might change if this became a real thing and people saw other people getting money. Then suddenly people may be saying, "Well, I should get some of that as well." So, okay. I mean, that's a plus and a minus. And <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. And let's continue the discussion. <laughs> <laughs>